Welcome again to season four of On the Couch with Charles. Listen, I know you've been missing me, but we've been busy with counseling, and I heard your responses that you like these talks. So we are back today with season four, and I don't know what other better way to open up with the guests that I have today. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to share, like, and go and grab somebody, grab a man, grab a friend, grab a nephew, and tell them to come and join you because we're about to talk mental health among the African-American community and specifically among men. So we'll be back in a few. Go and share, like, and grab somebody and join you. So welcome back again to season four with On the Couch with Charles. And listen, I am excited today to have our guests with us today. Today I have all of, what is it, like 6% of the African-American <laughs> men that's a therapist here. They are all therapists. They all have their own private practice. And I am glad to have my colleagues with me today. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So Steve, come on, tell us who you are. Stephen Freeman, and I am at Renewed Counseling and Therapy. Yeah, Dr. Justin Dodson, I am the owner of Navigating Courage Counseling and Consultation, LLC, licensed mental health therapist for the state of Tennessee, but my physical office is right here in Memphis. Thank you. Tim Terry with Transformation Consulting Group located in Midtown. I am Kevin Wells, half of Isaac and Wells. My wife is the other half, so we own our own practice right here in the city. So. I'm excited. You see, I wanted to bring out the heavy hitters on the first season opener of On the Couch with Charles. And listen, I'm going to jump right in because we got a lot of information to cover. So I want to hear from the guys. First of all, what made you, or what was your motivation to become a therapist? What was, what pulled your heartstring about and said, this is for me? So who want to start that? Who, who, what was your motivation? I started. You okay. Know, yeah. We have had we looking at each other. <laughs> uh, with me, it it was more so of uh, just allowing myself to listen to the people that were speaking to me and telling me this is what I should do. Okay. Rather than me being afraid of not succeeding, and I've been in counseling for over ten years. Okay. But I wanted to push myself more than just being in one particular field. And I had a good person, Timothy Terry, who uh, kind of motivated me to jump out and do it because I had the, school, the, t the tools and the skills that, that would be helpful. So that is what brought me into therapy. Okay, Tim. You responsible. Tim Terry. <laughs> you responsible for my guy. What, tell me what motivated you. Um, just for me, it was about being, um, uh, too, like uh, Stephen, I was in the school system, uh, um, dealing with behaviors uh, for man, 16 years in um, alternative schools. And so uh, I saw beyond the students that it was the parents. Mm -hmm. And so okay. we needed like family systems uh, just like to really get in, to really work with kids. Man, you got to start with the parents. Okay. It's the nuclear Absolutely. system for me. So I needed some more training to do that. So that's what got me to count. Absolutely. That's kind of what happened to me was when I left the prison system, I was working with the guys in the back end and I said, you know what, I want to change and work with the family because, you know, to avoid getting to that point, yes. I went back to school and that was kind of my passion. What do you think for you, uh, Kevin? Well, um, for me it was, I started in the criminal justice system. I was doing groups like anger management, batters intervention. I was a probation officer okay. and one of my supervisors said, you found your pool pit. And I didn't understood. I didn't understand what she meant at the time. But then uh, one of my mentors, uh, another therapist here in the city, uh, Rick Harrell, he said, "Well, you clinical. You just don't know it." So I eventually went to school for it. And again, my wife, who's a big inspiration, she said, "Your gifts will make room for you." Okay. So for me, it's not just a passion; it's a gift. I think it was something that I was meant to do. So what I'm hearing, one of the things I'm going into therapy with the therapist, one of the things I'm hearing is that people seen it in you and yeah. had to bring it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What about you, Justin? You know, um, interesting, so you mentioned criminal justice and law. I wanted to be a lawyer. I, I knew that I was going to be a lawyer, and then as soon as I got to college, I said, nope, I'm going to be a therapist. It didn't hurt that I couldn't really add. Or, math was not my thing. <laughs> so I know I can talk to people. Um, and so I just, I love the classes. I love the content. And then 
after the training, I realized that it was my purpose and it was my gift. Uh, and so I've worked with adolescents, I've worked with medical students, but now I'm really honing in on working specifically with adult males. Because okay. similar to you about the family system, these kids grow up to be adult males. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the adequate tools to sustain and resolve conflict. Uh, and so that's a big piece of why I'm here, because I'm aligned. And I think, you know, just as your wife said, when you are aligned with what you're supposed to do, God will make the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is where we all are. <laughs> yeah. See, I told y'all, listen, go and share and like, because we're about to get started. So guys, according to the Mental Health America, 13.4 of U.S. population identify as black and African-American, right? Of that, 16 reported having, 16% reported having mental health issues. That's over 7 million African-Americans with, with uh, mental health issues. So with this issue, over 7 million Americans living with mental health issues, this means we should be busy. Why aren't we busy with the African-Americans? Why aren't we busy? What are y'all saying? 7 million. Who's saying we're not busy? With African-Americans, why aren't they coming? So or are I, you seeing something different? I'm seeing something different. I, okay. I want to debunk that. that I know it. Because uh, in my practice, I have 90% um, black Americans. And out of that 90%, man, probably 45 to 50% are males. Okay. And so I don't know if right now mental health is in vogue, uh, but I do see an influx, influx okay. of uh Black phone coming in. Okay. Phone ain't stop ringing, man. <laughs> I actually started my private practice during the pandemic, right at the heart of the pandemic, uh, end of 2019. And man, January hit, pandemic hit. It's like, eee! my phone has never stopped. Right. And so I've always had an influx of clientele in African Americans, right? Really? What are y'all saying? I agree. I would agree with that. I think that the statement that people aren't coming to mm -hmm. therapy is becoming a little bit outdated. Okay. Um, so I would agree. I think people are coming. A lot of my clients who I work specifically with adult males and couples, and they're coming. Now, some people still need to come, okay. you know, and I think that it's becoming easier to have a conversation around therapy and expressing your feelings. Right. So I think that it's becoming easier. Mm -hmm. um, we're coming. We just need to still come. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What are you saying, Steve? Or uh, either one? Great. Uh, I can say that, that that is happening. I think uh, one of the main things that's allowing the stigma to kind of decrease is social media. Okay. Because you're seeing more individuals, you know, us, we like to look at and see what celebrities are doing. When you have more celebrities coming out talking about their mental health and mental this, mental wellness, it's kind of decreasing and debunking the stigma of black men or African Americans going to therapy. Okay. Because they are now seeing like, you know, we need to go sit down and talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe, like what Doctor just said, they're coming, but we do need more to come because therapy helps and it utilizes and it kind of breaks a lot of generational curses on the mindset of what how we were raised. Okay. Kevin. Uh, I'm going to piggyback off what Tim said. Um, something about the pandemic did it. The pandemic uh, allowed men to know that I don't have to go into the office. I can sit in, in front of a webcam and do this. So I think it decreased some of the anxiety with coming actually into the office or actually reaching out and being face to face. So it was something about the pandemic. I don't know about y'all, but my numbers went up. I'm like Justin though. I can't do the I can't do the math on it, but yeah. I know for sure my numbers went up. Yeah. Um, and black people, black people are really coming to therapy, especially black men. My majority of my uh, my clientele is black male and uh, couples, black couples. So people are coming, but can we get more? Definitely. Uh, but then at the same time, you look and you see, like Charles said, this is roughly sixty percent mm -hmm. of the uh, black male therapists in the city of Memphis. We need more of us too. So as we need more, hey, that, that way we, we can pass it on. It's not about the dollar, it's about the help. That's exactly what I was yeah. gonna say. I was gonna yeah. say like, this is the shortest right here. <laughs> right, right. They need more yeah. black males there, the you know what I mean? They need, like Steve said, uh, seeing the stars or 
uh, out there pushing it. This is one of the main reasons why I think we're doing this is to put it out there in social media that it's okay, here go some brothers here doing this, and this will help maybe on social media to get more people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're saying that it is going, people are coming, but we need more. So then let's address the stigmas. What are some of the stigmas that Ooh, we hear? Oh. <laughs> uh, I know the one I always hear is African Americans don't tell their business, they don't go outside. <laughs> I don't know if that's still true, Tim. <laughs> uh, you still yeah. hearing it, Justin, but uh, one of the things is we ain't discussing our business and it don't go outside mm -hmm. of this. Right. So uh, what do y'all think about the stigmas? Yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that, right? So we've all heard the term, what happens in this house, stays, stays in this house. House, house, right? <laughs> and so I think what that does for adolescents and kids growing up, that creates a space where you don't feel safe to talk about your feelings and express your emotions. And so I think that part of what we're doing, men just want a safe space too. Mm -hmm. You know, on my website it says, safe space to heal. Men want to be seen, we want to be complimented, we want to feel good. And I think that when we make space for that and give people the assurance that that's okay, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to cuss, come on, let's cuss together. Let's get on this couch and cuss. If you want to cry, come on, let's do that. And so, you know, I look at my office as a safe space for people to heal, just like that's what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if, just like therapy, you go into a barber shop. If you go to the barber shop and you hate your barber, I know it, I still go. <laughs> you still go? I still go. Um, and you don't like it, you're just never not going to go right. to the barber, you're going to find somebody else, right? Yeah. So the same thing with therapy, I think people have a bad experience when they tried it, and it's like, well, no, I ain't never going to do that. No, right. you're going to try again, and you're going you're gonna to keep going at it, um, because you deserve to feel good. Okay. Yeah. Anything about else, stigmas that you're hearing? I, um, I always go with... Um, Pray about it. Oh, so about you and I are church. Yeah, 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 I mean, right, we, right. we come right. out of church. So um, <laughs> yeah. countless lines of a come down to the altar, we leave yeah. it at the altar, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. yeah. But they don't want to do the work. So right. that is pretty much one of the main stigmas that I I feel the uh, black folk have as mm -hmm. far as the man. I'm gonna leave it, give it to God, and God gonna take care of it. And, and I walk away, as soon as you get in your car, you the same way. And still be anxious. Yes. Right. <laughs> and I want to piggyback on that as well, because the reality, I'm very spiritual, but you can't pray everything mm -hmm. out. Prayer doesn't work with everything. It, it, it heals, it provides, but therapy provides a different element to add to prayer, mm -hmm. where when you're asking God for this, but you're coming to us and we're helping you develop the, co the coping skills and the techniques to help you with what you're praying for, that's, it's, it's we work in, a, in alignment. Okay. But everything, if I'm suffering from uh, a mood disorder, I can't pray that mood disorder out of me mm -hmm. because that's in me. I have to develop certain skills and techniques to be able to work through those when they arise. Okay, okay. So, so what I take from that, uh, prayer is the goal, therapy is the plan. There we go. So, um, another one that, that we always hear, just go, just go take a drink. Just go smoke a blunt. <laughs> yeah. Just, 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 yeah. just go get you a drink and it, you, all your problems will go away. That bottle ain't gonna answer your problems. No. That blunt ain't gonna take your problems away. Because mm -hmm. tomorrow, them same bills gonna be due. Them same frustrations gonna still be in that house. Yeah. And whatever was not fixed is still gonna be broken. So one thing about it is, uh, I always tell my people, hey, uh, it won't hurt, but it may hurt your ego just a little bit because you have to be transparent with yourself mm -hmm. before anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm hearing is prayer plus therapy works. Mm -hmm. And to your point, to clarify even more, uh, I always tell when I go to churches and do speeches, we like, you have to tell church people because they're buying the fat after <laughs> eating a whole thing of ice cream and praying the fat out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But you can't pray the fat out. You got to get up and you got to run. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, do and what do you say? Gotta do the work. You got to do the work. Yeah. So I hear prayer. But then we got to do the work. Yeah, you can work. pray and overspend money. And Lord, please don't. Mm -hmm. You know what the interpretation is? Insufficient funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you overspent. Mm -hmm. You get yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to clarify is that prayer plus we have to do the work. Doing the work. Yeah. I don't think people, now, 
I don't know if this is going to be, <coughs> but people don't really want to do the work though. Right. I think people want to feel better. Feel they don't necessarily want to heal because healing brings, it may not feel good in the moment, right? But I think what therapy does is provide you tools to sustain and maintain a healthy mindset. Just like you said, drinking or the sex or destructive behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I think low key, we're all a coping skill away from being on Lamar somewhere. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> therapy really does provide you the skills to maintain and sustain over time where we're replacing a behavior with the, re with the behavior, right? So instead of drinking, let me do five things that, that are healthy, that are true, that are good for me, that won't leave me in that sunken place like alcohol does. And I won't have a hangover. Yeah. Because the older you get, the worse they are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So listen, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. Listen, I need you all to continue to share it like. Uh, call your friends and tell them that this discussion is going on and we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back again. I know you're enjoying this conversation, but we're about to wrap up. But before we wrap up, guys, I want to uh, mention, you know, we're talking to others uh, about therapy, but I want to show them an insight into our lives because therapy is not easy. Uh, we're listening day in and day out to uh, hard stories, emotional stories, and if we're not careful, we have to always keep ourselves intact and mentally and emotionally stable. So I want to peer, them to peer into us a minute as guys who all also have our struggles and have our issues and uh, how do we maintain our stability? You know, one of the things for me is I say therapists need therapists as well. Uh, but what do you all do for self-care to take care of yourselves? And I want them to kind of know that we're not just out there give, giving, but we have to receive help and care ourselves. So, uh, Steve, i start with you. What do you do to take care of yourself? Uh, it's a variety, but I meditate. I hit the gym faithfully. Uh, working out, for me, is a means of release. Okay. Because uh, I can kind of go in the gym and just allow my mind to flow, allow my, my mind to be clear. Um, also, uh, see, you know, I have a therapist, Okay. you know, so I do those things that help me beat me because if my, my, my mental and my state is not right, how can I truly provide the therapeutic experience that my clients are looking for? Okay, good, good. What about you, doctor? I love that, help me be me. Um, Honestly, I like to lay down. I like to, I like to rest. I like to watch Netflix. I am, you know, I am very much rest your body, okay. rest your mind. We we have, especially as men, you know, providers and taking care of people, and there's that pressure of always having it going and hustling, where people don't rest. So I like to lay down. Um, I like to laugh. I know people have their feelings about social media, but I like to mm -hmm. get on social media and let my mind escape to a world that I don't own or don't have ownership over. Interesting. Yeah, and so it's a fun 30 minute in between things just to scroll. So TikTok. laying down, yeah, exactly. <laughs> laying down um, the gym when I can, I won't lie, I'm not consistent with that. Uh, I like to laugh and, and spend time with my friends. Oh, good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Interesting. Tim, take care of yourself. What are you doing? Um, I, like Doc, man, I, I like to be at home. Man. I'm always going and going, so when I'm home, that's where you say, man. It, it's it's hard to get me out of my because at, at my house uh -huh. I have everything I need for me. Okay, and so it allows me to just man unwind, take um take the day off, and just totally be myself. Also, I enjoy um I go to a therapist. Also, uh, playing with my four year old son, uh, he wears me out. Um, that is a, a good release yeah. for me. Okay, um, and then man, you know just. Anytime I can have time to me, oh, yes. that is my sanctuary at yeah. all times. If I can just have some me time, I'm golden. I think I think Tim and I met each other at the airport. We were going to take me time. Me time. Yeah, we Where were. you going? <laughs> I, you going the same flight? Ain't we going? To, am I? But his flight. You left yeah, like ten minutes yeah, before yeah. I did. We were. We like to get out of here and mm -hmm. fly away, fly away, and come back. Right. Come back. I know, Kevin. How you take care of yourself? All right, well, it's a few different things. First off, like Tim said, uh, my home, my patio. Uh, I have a projector screen out there. I have a projector. I have a fire pit. Come on, dude. Uh, I'm I'm on. Oh, <laughs> my backyard is a yes, sanctuary. Sir. 
Uh, and also, one thing I do is when I'm off, I'm off. My my business line is off, so that's part of my self care. I have to be mindful and recognize that I have to take care of me as well. Uh, my daughter's a volleyball player, so I'm a fan. I'm her biggest fan. Don't tell her mom I said that, <laughs> but I'm her biggest fan. So I enjoy that time with family. I enjoy family. I enjoy riding in my truck. So I just I just hop in the truck and take a ride around 240. Uh, watch out for these crazy drives in Memphis. But outside of that, I mean family friends, laughter, like like Doc said, getting on social media just for a moment, just to escape the reality, because we deal with a lot of people's realities. Mm -hmm. So just to have that escape for a moment is great. Thank you. So I think I've heard from everybody on the panel is boundaries. Enacting those boundaries, taking care of self, and don't be afraid to set those boundaries. If you don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. I want to just lay here. Oh, can I, can I add yeah. something? Go ahead. I think all of us probably do it. Uh, utilizing one of the most important words in our lives, the word no. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is because that a word? That's a word, isn't it? <laughs> and it's a complete sentence. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Period. Not with your spouse. <laughs> right. It's not a word with your spouse. It's not a word with your it's spouse. It's a word with everybody else, but not with your spouse. <laughs> right. No is a complete sentence. Yeah. So listen, listen, thank you for joining us. Listen, thank you for joining us. I want you to share this. I want you to like it. I want you to go to YouTube, Change with Charles Therapy, and see all the other videos that we talk about. Uh, this was about you. This is about helping you. I hope there was something you be said, you heard, that can help educate, inspire you that, man, therapy works. It works, guys. Doesn't it work? It yeah. works. It works. So it works listen, if you work it. Yeah. These are four or five African-American guys that are out there. Uh, we all have our own practice, so don't be afraid to reach out to us. Reach out to someone if it's not us. We want to put before you and say that it's okay. Therapy is okay. So feel free to reach one of us. Their name and contact information will be on the screen afterwards. So feel free to contact us. And thank you for joining us again with On the Couch with Charles.